before Jessica comes to read for us, I want to set this series up a bit. Uh, like I said earlier, this is the, the season of Epiphany, after Epiphany. Really, Epiphany is one day, and it was January 6th. And that culminates Christmas, and it kind of begins for us several weeks of, of, again, following the ministry of Christ, but particularly as we think about what Christ has done in coming, what it is that God has done in sending Christ. And so Epiphany celebrates the, the revelation of God to us in Jesus Christ. What we know is that God has spoken to us in, in many ways throughout human history. And in, in these next five weeks, beginning today and the four after, we're going to look at five different ways in which God has spoken to us. Today, our theme is in the beginning. And we're going to look at um, how it is that God first spoke and literally spoke into creation. And then next week, we're going to talk about the prophets and, and what they did and how they spoke. And the third week, this is a progression, by the way. I don't know if, if you're following it to this point, but in the beginning. And then we'll look at the prophets. And then the third week, we'll look at Jesus himself. And then the fourth week, the people that Jesus left, the church. And then we'll wrap up with the canon that the church left. It's not a weapon. Well, actually, it is kind of a weapon, but not the shooting weapon. The canon is the Bible, the scriptures that we have, the way that God speaks to us through the written word today. So in the beginning, the prophets, Jesus Christ, his people, the church, and the scriptures. Now I'll just, I'll tell you the conclusion for the whole series right now, but you must come back uh, every week nonetheless to hear how we parse that out. Our understanding is that Jesus is the best revelation of God to us. That we have all these other things, the scriptures, the prophets, the church speaks the word of God, the Bible speaks the word of God, but in the end, the highest understanding of the word of God, the best revelation, the best picture we have of God is Jesus Christ. And everything else helps us understand who Christ is, and the church speaks for Christ, and, and we, we figure out who Christ is together, and, and the scriptures are the foundation for our understanding of, of who Christ is and what the story of Christ was and is, but in the end, it's Jesus. I guess that's the conclusion of pretty much every sermon series, um, but he, we'll hear that through and through, that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Jessica, would you come, and let's hear, she's going to read to us uh, from the very beginning. Um, if we're preaching a sermon on, in the beginning, we ought to hear from the very beginning, and then she'll also read from our gospel text today, from John chapter 1. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let's pray again together. First, please pray for me as I preach this morning that this would be the Word of God. And now pray for yourself that as the Word of God comes before you as you listen. Pray that you would open your hearts to what God has to say for you as an individual. And now pray for each other. Pray for your church. Um, and do that by picking somebody around you 
and pray for them, remembering that together as we receive the word of God, the hope is that it, it, it is a seed planted within us, that when we leave this place, it would grow and bear fruit in the world. And so pray for somebody right around you. Father God, we, we give you this time and we listen to what you have to say to us by your spirit and in Christ. Amen and amen. We are constantly receiving messages, like all the time. Whether we are aware of it or unaware of it, whether we're conscious to the fact that we're receiving a message or, or we're unconscious or it's in our subconscious, we are always receiving messages. What are some of the messages that I'm asking for you to speak out loud back to me, okay? What are some of the ways, and there are thousands, so you, you must think of some. What are some of the ways that we receive messages all the time? Advertising. Advertising. Big one, sure. Facebook. <laughs> Telephone. Horns honking. Horns honking, absolutely, is a message. The voice in my head. Johnny, we'll talk about that after, okay? Uh, Evan. Yeah, we, we send messages, maybe like through the mail, right? We send letters through the mail. Hannah. Everyone? All right, yes, everyone tells, sends messages to us. Looks, expressions on someone's face is absolutely a message. Jessica. By raising, my, by raising my... So I knew to call on Jessica because I saw this and I know what that means. It's a message to me. Hey, I've got something to say. Now, it doesn't work all the time, but right now it will. Anyone else? Media. What kinds of media? Text messaging. Text messaging. M movies, television. Radio, books. Comic books. As if that doesn't fit in books. Tone of voice, absolutely. The way that one speaks sends a, sends a message. Say again. Moto oh, emoticons, yes. Emoticons, the smiley faces, yes. Body language. Not speaking is absolutely a message. Actions speak louder than words, they say, right? Pretty, anything else? Pretty much anything that we do Anything we say, not say, action, express, anything becomes a message, whether we realize it or not, right? And it's important, just as we think at the most basic level of communication, it's important for us to realize this, that what I do, how I look, what I'm, how I'm moving, sends a message. And we haven't even talked yet about, we've just been talking about sending messages, we haven't even talked yet about what it is for a message to be received, which may be even more important than the message that we think that we're sending, right? I mean, it might be one thing for me to say something to you, but how you receive what I say is really what matters in the end. I mean, I'm, I'm supposedly taught how to think about this when I was taught how to preach. That even though I, have the, I might have what I think is the most well-crafted sermon manuscript or outline in front of me, the fact of the matter is, is that at the, at the end of the day, if you can't receive that message, it's, 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 it's no good. And so the reception of a message is just as important as the, if not more so, than the, than the giving or sending of a message. We're receiving messages all the time. Now, now I want to talk about words. Words are, of course, a message, but I want to talk about them in, in a specific way. Words are, are actually pictures. Sometimes we, we differentiate between words and pictures as if they're like different things, but words are actually pictures. Even literally, when I, when I look at the script on a piece of paper, it's, it's made up of words and sentences and paragraphs and stuff like that, but every word has characters. Right now I'm looking at the word into, and that's spelled I-N-T-O, and, and those four letters are actually pictures. Sometime long ago, somebody decided that a straight line with a dot on top is an I. 
That's the letter I. But it's a picture. And we, we've, we've looked at it so many times that we don't even really think about it, that, that that is a picture. We just know that that's the letter I, and that when you put it together with the letter N-T-O, it's the word into, and we can, we can just read it as quick as, as ever now that we've done it so many times. But we are receiving a picture. Even Now, you may not think about this, but, but people who work in, in certain industries know that this is true. Even like the font, the way that a, a letter is, is formed or shaped has meaning to it. And so if there are wavy, uh, frilly uh, characters, it, it kind of sends a, a certain kind of message about the word that I'm trying to tell you about. Or if it's straight and, and, and narrow, it's got a certain kind of business feeling to it. So even words that we read on a page are made up of characters, are made up of pictures. Words are pictures. Right now, you're not going through every step of the process in your head, but the fact of the matter is that you are going through a process when you receive the words that I'm saying. I don't have to explain every word that I say. Sometimes I do. I stop and explain a word because we may not use it that that often or I want us to think about it in a certain way. But right now, if I say the word phone, an image comes to your head. It, It might be different for different people and that's the reception of the message, but, but generally we all have an understanding about what, I, what I'm meaning when I say the word phone. It's a piece of technology that I put to my ear and my mouth, and I hear and I, and I speak into it, and you, you all know that. I don't have to explain the word phone to you. It's just in your vocabulary, we say. Xbox. Or Xbox, yes, that's another one. That's, that's what he's thinking about right now, Xbox. But you understand what I'm getting at with with this this idea of words. And so when it comes to the word of God, when we talk about the word of God, what are we talking about? We're talking about all of these things wrapped up according to God. The word of God is the message of God. Uh, Several years ago, a a man named Eugene Peterson started to, to, um, he took the ancient texts uh, uh, the Hebrew text and the Greek text of the Bible, and he began to paraphrase the Bible into what he hoped was helpful for his church. He actually did it for his church because he was a pastor. Uh, and in the end, he said, you know what, I need to call this, I want to call this the message. Because that's his understanding of what we're reading when we read the written word of God, that it's a message to us from God. And that's what the word of God is. The message of God to us. And as I said a few minutes ago, we have come to understand the message of God to come to us in a whole variety of ways. And that's what we're looking at in these weeks. It's what God has spoken to us, what God has said to us, what God has revealed to us. This is a word I do need to explain because we'll talk about it over these weeks. Revelation. The revelation of God. Sometimes we talk about that. And the root word of revelation is reveal. And what does it mean to reveal except that we are shown something? So the revelation of God is that which God has shown us or what God is showing us or what God will show us. The revelation of God. His revealing to us of who he is, what he wants, what what his understanding of the past is and what therefore our understanding of the past should be. The revelation of God is that which God has revealed to us. The word of God, the message of God, the revelation of God, what God has shown to us who God has shown us to be, who God has shown us he wants us to be. This is all the word of God, the message of God. In Hebrews chapter 1, it it begins in this way. The very beginning uh, words of the whole book of Hebrews says, in the past, God spoke through the prophets to our ancestors in many times and many ways. This is I could have just read that sentence and skipped the last seven minutes of the sermon, but, but we need to expound. Listen to it again. In the past, God spoke through the prophets to our ancestors in many times and many ways. In these final days, though, the writer of Hebrews says, he spoke to us through a son. And then the whole rest of the book of Hebrews, and it's pretty long, goes on to talk about how God has, has spoken to us and is speaking to us through this Son, Jesus Christ. It talks about the Old Testament and the law and the sacrificial system and how that's different in Christ and how Christ came to fulfill it but tweaked it and, and made it something for us to really understand who God is through what he has done. And we're going to go through so many ways that we see this, but the word of God is the revelation of God to us, what God has shown us and is showing us. Now, I need to give a side note, and I'll probably give this every week of this series, that we, through any of these mediums, 
media, any of these ways that we hear God speak, we believe and have a faith that says that if God is speaking to us, it's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this is important because just because I pick this Bible up and I read it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to receive the message of God. Now, God works in mysterious ways, and, and, and there, are, there are stories of, of people just doing that, picking it up and reading it. And I believe that can happen because God can do whatever God wants to do. And God shows up, the Holy Spirit shows up when God wants to do that. But for those of us who know, we approach this in prayer. We approach it asking God, speak to me through this. What we know is that there have been a lot of people who've read this and twisted it in, in horrible and horrendous ways. And we wouldn't say that the Holy Spirit was in that, right? If, the, if somehow they contradict what the, word, the written word of God is actually saying and they do things that are against the word of God, we, we would say, no, the Holy Spirit did not inspire that. If we are going to hear the message of God, whether we're reading scripture, whether we're praying, whether we're sitting in church together, we do it before I, I preach a sermon, we do it when we sit down to a meal, we are going to pray and ask that God be with us. That's why your pastor finds it pretty important to say at the end of a prayer, by your spirit and in Christ. Amen. Because I want the constant reminder that if we're going to hear from God, if we're going to participate in the presence of God, it is by God's Holy Spirit. And so whatever else I say about how God speaks to us, how God reveals himself to us, what the word of God is, just know that underlying it all, we're assuming that there is the presence, the active presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at these passages for a couple of minutes. Uh, Genesis 1. There are so many things that have been said about, about Genesis 1 and 2 and, and so on. This morning we began very simply, just with the first two verse, uh, excuse me, three verses. When God began to create the heavens and the earth. So, so we know right away, it's not just the beginning of the Bible. I mean, obviously it works nicely that way. But this is the beginning. The beginning of creation. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. And then all of a sudden, God said. God spoke. God uttered. God put forth and said, let there be light. And so, there was light, or light appeared. And, and if you're familiar with it, you know much of the rest of this chapter. It goes on, and every day God says something, and something comes forth, and it happens. And we get all the beauty of creation, the, the plants. And, and, well, before that, the land is separated from the waters, and there's the, the plants and the animals, and then finally people. There's some unique things about the people that God creates. I don't have time for that this morning. But in the beginning, God spoke. You know, there are many ways that we could have, you know, come up with that we believe God began things, you know. Maybe God rubbed his hands together and like formed things with it. No, it's very intentional that our story, the beginning of our story begins with God speaking. God spoke into existence. Because in the very beginning, and we believe we'll say to the very end, God has a message. He has a purpose in what he wants to happen in and through creation, in and through humanity, in and through Christ. And God speaks. It's a message. These aren't just facts about, about the world or, or the universe. But it's very intentional for us to understand that God has a message in the very beginning. Let's just go a little bit before God speaking, though. In verse 2, it says, The earth was without shape or form. It was dark. Uh, there's this understanding of, of, of kind of a chaos. There actually isn't nothingness in this text. We could talk about that in other situations, but in this text, it's not nothingness. There is something. It's just not good. And so for God to speak means that things change. There's, there's this, let's read it again. The earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. Water, especially in the Old Testament, but also in the New, is a, is a picture, while it's a picture of life, the seas, really, the oceans, are a picture of chaos. The unknown, really, that which is not known. Even today, if you're sitting on a little rowboat out in the middle of a big body of water, 
you get that feeling. Right? There's unknown mystery beneath you. You don't want to fall out of the boat. Well, most people wouldn't want to fall out of the boat and explore that unknownness. And, that, and that's what's going on here. But God spoke, and things began to become clear. There was light. Light appeared. And that's the beginning of God's different picture of how things would go. God's message. Uh, fast forward just, just a few books to John chapter 1. And John's writing, or John's disciples are writing, the tradition of John. And we get these words. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. In my Bible, there are four lines, and every line has, this is always tough, it has the Word, the Word. And so what's going on here? John is, is saying everything I've just been trying to tell you, that in the very beginning, from the beginning, there was a message of God. It wasn't just a message, though, because the message was God. God was the message. And the message, it was, it was with God, and it was God. It's all the same thing, basically. But what John's trying to tell us is God isn't just this being God, but God has something for us, a message Something for us to, to hear and to listen and, and to follow and to, to, to go in the way of. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, he says. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. Pay attention to these words. Was life. What came, in, what came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Now, in the creation story, and even here, we, we hear the word light, and, and we can think about you know, all this light around us, and, and, and there, the, the, the assumption there, the notion there, is that light is something that shows us things, right? Again, in the creation story in here, it's not just a, a neat fact that we're talking about these, I'm not a scientist, but these things that you know, give rays and, and actually physically show things up. But, but it's the, the meaning of what's going on, that God spoke and there was light, and things began to become clear because God spoke. And, and here back in John, through the word was life, and the life was the light for all people. That is that God's message, this word that was in the beginning and that was God, is what we need to have life. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. We can't receive messages without this kind of light. You, let's go very basic here. We can't read a book without light. Uh, I enjoy watching my kids when they go to bed do some of the same things that some of us used to do as kids. Um, I haven't caught them under the covers yet with a flashlight. But I have had to go in sometimes and tell him, you know, it's time. Let's put the nightlight away. Braden got a really neat um, book light for, for Christmas uh, that he, he's loving using. But they couldn't read their books in their rooms without actual light. And, and this is, we extrapolate out what John is saying to us here is that we can't have life without the light that God gives us. We can't have life the way that God intends for us in the beginning, before all else, unless we have the light that God is sending. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to look at this passage a whole lot more in a couple weeks when we talk about Jesus, but I have to tell you right now that John is going to go on to say to us that that word, that life, that light is Jesus. That Jesus is the word. That all, if we want things to become clear to us according to what God wants, if we want things to become clear to us, we will receive this life, this light, this word that is Jesus. And that this, this, this message that is Jesus, God meant from the very beginning. He's not necessarily making um, teleological claims about Jesus being present at creation, but what he is saying is that the message that we receive in Jesus, Christ, was there from the very beginning. That's what God wanted for us from the very beginning. Let's go a little further to the passage we heard a lot earlier in our service today from 1 John chapter 1. By the way, this is a wonderful Bible study if you wanted to go home and, and look even more at Genesis 1, John 1, 
and 1 John 1 and all the parallels. It's beautiful. Listen to 1 John chapter 1. We announce to you what existed from the beginning. What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have seen in our hands handled about the word of life. The life was revealed, and we have seen, and we testify and announce to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and what we have heard, we also announce it to you so that you can have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things to you so that our joy can be complete. And so 1 John takes it even a little bit further in this this letter to Christians. So there was the Word that was Christ, but now there's us. And we bear this word, we bear this Christ to the world. Why? We announce it to you so that you can have fellowship with us. So I don't, I don't know if you can see this, this progression. Again, in the very beginning, God had a message that was God, actually. God had God's self for us. And the message was for the whole world. And what we know is that it didn't go very well because of us. And Jesus came and showed us how it's supposed to go as a human, as one of us. And now our hope, our joy, that our joy may be made complete, our joy, our opportunity, our responsibility, our mission, our path, is to announce the same message in the world. To announce the word to the world. To announce Jesus to the world. In the beginning, this was God's plan. That we would, it's not just Jesus of Nazareth. It, I mean, he shows us what this message is, but, but it, it's all that Jesus, the Christ, encompasses. Light and life and love. And, and because of us, the need for grace and mercy and forgiveness. This is, here's another term for you, the good news. This is good news. This, this is how we, they use the word here, fellowship and joy. When we, when we stop and remember who Jesus is, that Jesus isn't a speed bump, that Jesus doesn't trip us up, but that Jesus has the greatest love for us, it's a joy to share that message, that word with people. And so all that we do as a church, as a people, and the individuals who come out of the church, in being able to share this good news, it's, well, it's not always fun, But at the end of the day, it is a joy because we're participating in this eternal, beautiful, full of light and grace message, word of God. As we finish, I have some some questions I want us to consider. And I'm not going to answer them right now. Maybe we could talk about them in Sunday school, but I I want to leave these with you for you to think about as we continue in this, this series. We understand that God has spoken and speaks in different ways. And we do lots of things, even today, right, to hear how God speaks. We pray, we read the scriptures, we come and hear a sermon at the church, we sit with our fellow believers and listen to what each other have to say in in challenge or in rebuke sometimes or in accountability. Uh, We sit in silence. We listen to music. We have many different ways individually and as a church that we listen for the word of God. And I've already told you some of the historic ones we'll go through, right? Creation and the prophets and Jesus and the church and the scriptures. If God has spoken in different ways to humanity throughout time, what does that mean for us today? If we understand that that God does it in different ways, what does that mean for us as a people who claim to follow God and and who want to know what God wants from us and for us and through us. What does it mean for us as individuals? If God speaks in different ways at different times, what does it mean for me as an individual? As we listen for God each day, well, how do you listen for God each day? if God has spoken in various ways throughout human history, what are the implications of that? 
can we just sit around and bank on the things of the past? Oh, I still want to answer that, but we'll let it sit for a minute. We say that God doesn't change, and that's true. But does humanity change? Uh, of course, there are things that don't change in, in, in you know, the, the species that is homo sapiens, the, 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 the humans. Of course, there are things that don't change. But we know that there are things that do change in humanity, particularly individuals. Are you the same person you were 10 years ago? Are you the same person you were a year ago? A week ago? When you woke up this morning? No, for better or for worse, you are not the same person you were in the past. How have you changed? And what does that mean about how you're going to listen for the message of God? God, God doesn't change. But, but as we change, as we go through experiences in life, as we go through difficult times, as we go through good times, as we grow, as we mature, as we grow more immature, that, that, that can happen. We see it a lot. As we go through different things like this, what does that mean for how we shift our step and how we're listening for the message of God? How do we listen to what God is trying to reveal to us, to say to us? One of the ways in which we've heard God speak and we experience the message of God, who God has shown us to be, particularly in Christ Jesus, is through the meal we receive together at this table. And I don't want to say it changes every week, but, but what we do here and what we receive here and coming forward and partaking, it, it takes on slightly different meanings from time to time. And it might be because of what's going on in our life at the moment. It might be because Pastor Jeremy made you do something weird this time, you know, like you had to dip the bread this time or something, or maybe the bread didn't taste right, or more often the juice didn't taste right. Uh, or, or maybe just in sometimes in so, some moments of receiving the elements, the body and blood of Christ, we are just swept powerfully by what Christ did for us. There are lots of different ways that, that God speaks through it to us. And that's why we come again and again to receive what is supposedly the same thing. Because we need to constantly, we're changing, we're going through experiences, we're being hurt sometimes. And so we need to receive the grace of God and receive it in new and fresh ways. And so we come to it every time and pray, God, speak to me in this. Let me know what you, and even before so, before we would come, there are things to say or to leave, you know? That's why I invite you, if you need to sometimes, to kneel at the altar before you actually re partake of what you're receiving. So you can come appropriately. And by appropriately, I'm not just talking about, you know, well, no, I am <laughs> talking about sin. But, but just to be open, you may not think of it as you're coming forward, but just to be open in that moment. You know, God, what do you have for me in this? What do I need to put right before I would receive of this life-giving element? And so this morning, as you come forward, I, I ask you to pray that in your hearts as you receive. God, what do you want to say to me today in this? What are you revealing to me in these days?